Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tufu. I'm a data science consultant working here in the Netherlands. In today's video, I'll teach you how to create an interactive visualization dashboard in Python. An interactive dashboard is a great way to share insights from the data and the results of your data science project. Of course, you can also create dashboards in BI tools such as Tableau or Power BI. But using Python, we have the flexibility to create a lot of different types of visualization and we can also customize our visualization however we want. For this visualization project, we'll be using a data set from our World in Data website about the world's carbon dioxide emissions over the history. If you want to customize this project to make it your own portfolio project, please feel free to pick another data set that you're interested in. So before we start, let's take a look at some popular visualization platforms and libraries in R and Python. This graph shows the different dashboarding tools and their popularity over time. Over the past few years, Dash and Streamlit have gained a lot more popularity as dashboarding solutions in Python. However, X2 has their own pros and cons, and so it's important for us to know when to use which. If you're working with Jupyter Notebooks for your project, Voila and Panel are the two libraries that support working with Jupyter Notebooks, which means you can turn your notebook into a dashboard. Meanwhile, Dash, Streamlit, and Flask do not support this. In addition, each of them is suitable or optimal for a certain use case, but I won't go deeper into the comparison in this video. For now, I have two options, namely Voila and Panel, as I'm planning to work with two with the notebooks. I found out that Voila is actually not very flexible in terms of how you can customize and design the looks of your dashboard, so for this reason, I'm gonna go for Panel. So what the heck is Panel? Pano is an open source Python library that lets you create custom interactive web apps and dashboards by connecting user defined widgets to plots, images, tables, or text. Pano is developed by Anaconda. Uh, I mean the Anaconda company, not the Anaconda. It's one of the seven packages in the Holovis ecosystem. Here's a simplified overview of how these seven packages work together to help turn a pandas data frame into a visualization dashboard. Okay, that's a lot of information. If you're still hanging there, let's now really get our hands dirty and get started with our project. First of all, let's create a project folder called CO2 dashboard and then go into this folder. Now we want to create a virtual environment for our project. This will create an isolated environment for our Python project so that this project can have its own dependencies and packages regardless of whatever dependencies every other project has. This step is crucial to make our visualization work properly because I've encountered some really strange issues with the visualization in JupyterLab if we don't do this. If you're on Windows, you need to use another comment for this, but I'll put it somewhere on the screen for you. We'll be working with two libraries, namely hvplot and panel. Let's install hvplot and also JupyterLab for our project. For panel, we need to install it in the base environment instead of the virtual environment, because otherwise I found out that the plots would not be interactive in JupyterLab. It's kind of strange and I still don't understand exactly why, but anyway, let's go out of our virtual environment and install panel. Now let's go back again into our virtual environment and launch the Jupyter Lab. Now we want to create a new notebook and import the necessary libraries, namely pandas, numpy, panel, and an extension called tabulator for creating interactive tables. And lastly, we import the hvplot.pandas, which allows us to create interactive data frames. More on that in a second. Now let's read in the data set that we want to use. As you can see, for each country in the world and for each year in the history, we have the data for each measure of CO2 emissions. If we print out all the columns, we can see that we have data on CO2 amount, CO2 per capita, CO2 from different sources such as coal, oil, and gas. We also have other information such as GDP and population of the countries. Please note that the country column here also includes continents and the world as a whole. For example, we can filter this data for the world or Europe or North America. Looking 
this data set, we can brainstorm on what kind of visualization we want to build in our dashboard and how exactly we want our dashboard to look like. I want our dashboard to have a header, a sidebar with some text and the overall settings and control widgets. Then in the main body of the dashboard, we can have a few different visualizations. First of all, we can visualize the CO2 emission over time by continent. Next to this visualization, we can add a table to show the exact amount of CO2 per continent, just for further information. For the next graph, it could be interesting to plot the CO2 emissions against the GDP per capita. So each country will be a dot on this scatter plot. We want to see if CO2 emissions are associated with higher or lower GDP or if there's no correlation at all. In the last visual, what shall we do? I don't have idea. <laughs> okay, maybe we can plot the amount of CO2 emissions from different sources such as coal, oil, or gas per continent. So we can have a comparison of which continent produces the most of a certain source of CO2. For all the graphs, we can have an overarching interactive control. For this data set, as we have many different years, I think it makes sense to have a slider here for the year. Going back to our notebook, I'm a bit short in time for filming today, so I'll walk you through the code and not do the full live coding. Anyway, first of all, we'll do some pre-processing to replace the NA values with zeros. And we'll also create a new column for GDP per capita by dividing the GDP by the population. We have to be a bit careful here with dividing by zero values. Now we need to make our data frame interactive by calling this interactive method on our data frame. You'll see in a bit what we can do with it. Please bear with me. Next, we want to create a few widgets for our visualizations. The widgets are the interactive elements on our dashboard like sliders, radio buttons, or drop-down menus that users can use to configure our visualization. If you go to the panel's documentation page, you can see a lot of different types of widgets you can create. For example, slider, radio button, and also how exactly to create them. So here we go. I have checked for the mean and the max value of the year in our dataset, so I have put them here. Next, we want to create a radio button widget for the different measures of CO2, which is the y-axis of our first chart. In this case, I'm interested in CO2 and CO2 per capita, so I include them here. Now we need to connect the data pipeline with the widget so that every time the widgets change, the underlying data for our visualization is also updated. So here I just select only the years that are before the year value in the slider, and then we aggregate the data by country and year column. So here's what the data pipeline looks like. Now let's move on to create the chart using this data pipeline. It's very simple, just one line of code, and you can see that our chart is interactive. And if we move the slider, the year is now also moving. Now let's move on to the table, which use the same underlying data, only that we want to present the data in the table format. And for this, we can use the tabulator extension that we have imported. And you can see that the table also has exactly the same widgets, and the table is also interactive. For the CO2 and GDP scatter plot, we want to create a different pipeline because now we want to filter the data set based on the exact year on the year slider. And also we want to select only the countries and not the continents. And again, the scatter plot is also very simple to create with HV plot. So here we have the X axis being GDP per capita and the Y axis being the CO2. And if we move the slider, the scatter plot is also updated. For the last visualization, which is the CO2 sources by continent, I create a new radio button uh, widget for different sources of CO2, coal CO2, oil CO2, and gas CO2. Now, in a very similar manner as for the previous charts, we create a data pipeline and connect it to the widgets, and then we can use HVPlot to plot the data. And now we can select different CO2 sources and uh, see which continent produces the most of them. So now that we have created all the visualizations that we need, the last step would be to create a dashboard, which is simply to put all the visualizations together on one page. Luckily, Pano has a lot of dashboarding templates that allow us to put very easily all the visualizations together. I'll choose the fast list template, and we can define here the title, the sidebar, which is the left panel on the dashboard. We can add here the text or the images in markdown formats, and we also want to include our year slider on this 
a sidebar. Next, we'll define the main body of the dashboard. So the whole concept is very similar to how we design websites. So everything can be put in rows and columns. As our dashboard has two rows, I have two rows here. So the first row has two columns, one for the line chart and the other one is for the table. Now for the line chart, I also want to include the, uh, the widget which belongs to this graph. So that's why I include this widget here in this column. And the right hand side column is just a table. So it's just this. For the second row, we also have very similar structure. We have two columns and the first column is the scatter plot and the second column is the bar chart with its own widget. Now after we define the template, we just need to make it servable. Now we can actually serve this dashboard by going to the terminal and using the command panel serve. So yes, this is our dashboard. It doesn't look bad, right? And you can move the slider and click on things to play with it. I'll push all the code to my GitHub and also share it with you in the description below so you can take a look at it in more detail and also use it for your own project. If you get any value from this video, please smash the like button to support my channel. For more portfolio projects like this, check out my portfolio project playlist on my channel. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.